I often like to joke that the magnetic lasso tool in Photoshop is utilized for the selection of metallic objects in a photograph. That's obviously not the case. Rather, the magnetic lasso tool is one that looks for contrast along the edge of an object you paint along with the magnetic lasso tool. In this lesson, we'll take a look at this unique selection tool. To get started, of course, we need to choose the magnetic lasso tool, which is found underneath the lasso tool on the toolbox. So simply click and hold on the button for the lasso tool, and then choose the magnetic lasso tool from the flyout menu. As with most of the selection tools in Photoshop, we have the options for New Selection, Add to Selection, Subtract from Selection, or Intersect with Selection. We can also feather the selection and choose the Anti-Alias option, which I recommend leaving turned on. The next three settings are unique to the Magnetic Lasso tool. The Magnetic Lasso tool is actually a brush tool that you'll paint with along the edge of an object you're trying to select, and so there's a width or brush size. You can adjust the value here, but I find it more useful to adjust it on the fly. Press the left square bracket key to reduce the brush size, or the right square bracket key to increase the brush size. We'll examine in more detail what size you might want to use in just a moment. The contrast setting determines how much contrast the magnetic lasso tool is looking for. To be perfectly honest with you, I always leave this set to the default value of 10%. I've never seen changing this value have any beneficial effect on my selection, so I just leave it as it is and I don't worry about it. The frequency setting, though, I do concern myself with. This determines how frequently anchor points will be placed as we create our selection. Let me show you what I mean. If we reduce the frequency down to zero and then I click and move my mouse, you'll see that individual anchor points, the little squares, are being added to define the boundaries of my selection. In other words, where is Photoshop finding contrast in the area I'm painting? I'll press Escape to cancel my selection and then increase the frequency to the maximum value of 100%. Now when I click and move my mouse, you can see that many more anchor points are being created, which helps to improve the precision of the magnetic lasso tool. I actually leave the frequency set to 100 in all cases. I find that that produces more accurate selections with most images. I'll press Escape again to cancel that selection, and let's take a look at a more realistic example. If I want to select this antenna, you can imagine it'd be a little bit difficult. After all, it blends into the background in a variety of different areas. While the magnetic lasso tool won't do a perfect job, it actually will give us a very good starting point. First, I need to adjust the size of my brush. I want the size to be big enough that I can move at a comfortable pace, but small enough that I'm not going to overlap with other areas of high contrast. In other words, I want to be able to easily move the mouse along the edge of the object without interfering with other areas, but at the same time, I don't want to have to be too precise as I'm painting along that edge. In this case, I'll press the left square bracket key to reduce the size of the brush, in general, I want to have a small enough brush that only one high contrast area, the edge I'm trying to define, will be inside the circle. I'll then click on the edge of the object I'm trying to select to create my initial anchor point. I can then leave the mouse button alone, simply moving the mouse along the edge of the object I'm trying to select. Be sure to keep the edge of the object inside the mouse circle and also make sure that you do not allow a higher contrast area to enter inside the circle. In this way, we can simply trace along the edge. If at any time you want to add an anchor point manually, for example, if that edge doesn't seem to be following the edge of the object very well, you can simply click with the mouse. And if you were to make a mistake, for example, if I accidentally bump the mouse over to the side and additional anchor points are created, the first thing I need to do is to move my mouse back over the edge of the object before the mistake was made. I'll leave the mouse positioned there and then press the backspace or delete key to delete individual anchor points until I'm back to the anchor point nearest my mouse. At this point, I can continue moving my mouse along that edge. Now, for our purposes, I'm not going to worry about precision, so I'm going to move rather quickly here. As you can see, I'm still getting a reasonably good selection, but because I'm moving so fast, it's not going to be perfect. And in fact, in most cases, the magnetic lasso tool does not create a perfect selection, but it gives me enough of a starting point 
that I like putting it to use in many situations. When I'm finished tracing the object, I can go back to my initial anchor point and click on that point in order to close the selection. If you can't find the original starting point, simply double click as close to that starting point as possible. A straight line will then connect that point where you double clicked with your original starting point. In either case, the result is a basic selection. And as you can see here, a rather good selection, at least as a basic starting point. If I zoom in to the top of the antenna, you can see that there are some mistakes there, but these are much easier to clean up than to try to create the selection from scratch. From my perspective, the magnetic lasso tool never creates a perfect selection, and yet it proves quite helpful in creating or refining selections in a variety of situations. Because it can be used to produce basic selections very quickly, I often use the magnetic lasso tool to get started with a selection, using other tools to fine-tune that selection to perfection.